Chatelet Bridge Burners, Fuzzy Dunlop Skates, and this is part two of my MGTOW Ride Along series. And my last video, oh, it was a fucking long one, it was like half an hour long. So, anyway, if, if you guys didn't watch that one, you should watch that one before watching this one, but it doesn't really make a difference. Um, well, it kind of does, but anyway, whatever. <laughs> so, the whole point was to take you guys with me as I not only practice, but have fun and eat shit a bunch of times and um, basically what goes through my mind when I go skate or when I go do something that I love and I don't know I guess the point of the video was uh, I don't know it was meant it was meant to motivate even though at the end I felt like I ended up looking like shit but I said in a little outro yesterday that I had a few revelations at the end which is very true and I'm going to share a couple of them with you, but naturally, you draw your own conclusions, you know, but hopefully the message you take is one of motivation. So even if you look at the video and say, oh, what a waste of time, again, you know, it only took about two hours, and to run the camera, it didn't really cost anything, you know, and oh yeah, by the, by the way, the reason it shut off was because um, I had 256 gigs of footage on my iPhone. So it was full, 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 full. So I have to delete that shit. Uh, I still haven't done it yet. And I have a four terabyte backup drive that's full of footage. And uh, my terabyte hard drive is almost full now. Yeah, I got to do a bunch of stuff. So uh, I said yesterday that I spotted some silver lining. And uh, all right. And more than silver lining. So basically here it is. So in that whole session, and I didn't set out to make like a skate montage, just a kind of montage of what I do, like, you know, for MGTOW and for, I guess, philosophy's sake, I guess. But even in doing so, and the session started off really good, and then at the end, like, it seems like I struggled with the trick. But like I said, I watched the footage, and I edited all the footage of only my landed tricks. So I took out all the missed attempts. And looking at all my landed tricks, well, first of all, I had over 10 minutes originally of landed tricks, but the mini ramp footage at the beginning, I'm not going to include it today because it's fucking boring. So, like, whatever. If you think it's cool, go back to the last video and watch the beginning and, like, that's that. But I'm not putting it in again. It's fucking boring. It was just warm-up shit. And even though the rest of the video is warm-up shit, I think it looks a lot cooler. And again, my opinion, but whatever. What do you guys think? Like, <laughs> do you think it all looks like shit? Because <laughs> I feel that way often. But I digress. So the whole point is that even though I felt like shit, I still came away with fucking 10 minutes of fucking footage. And yeah, look, it's not fucking amazing footage. It's not groundbreaking, but it's foot footage of tricks that were pretty much fucking solidly landed. And again, I did not set out to like get tricks. I just set out to do my fucking warm up and my session and to record it and to share that part with you. But I'm going to get an edit out of it and looking at uh looking at like okay it's shortened now it's down to like seven minutes but when you look at all the tricks in succession even when i do and i know all the missed attempts that went behind them and so do you guys and even when i feel like i suck like watching this footage after like there's no way that i could have produced and landed all of these tricks all of these times if i sucked there's no way I could have landed any of these tricks once if I sucked. And that's how it was again, you know, when I was younger. And this is like the skater's kind of mentality or the old skater's mentality, which is doesn't matter if it takes you a million tries to land a trick. Even if you land it and it looks like shit, like that's the whole fucking struggle. And the video is going to be like those million tries and that one land is going to be shown like 10 times in slow-mo because it's a moment of triumph. Now, if you land that trick first try, there's no struggle to show. And it just goes in fucking first try and then you can do some other shit after. But if you did struggle on a trick, then the whole struggle usually goes in and it's fucking respectable. Now, the thing is, in the past, that was acceptable. In the past, it was acceptable to only be able to do things once. But consistency is important. And in this video, it's mostly just trick, 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 trick. 
Uh, they're individual tricks, you know, and I couldn't, it's hard to set up the camera by yourself to film a bunch of tricks in succession at this skate park. So usually when I film tricks in succession, which are called lines, uh, I have Mark help me out and Mark fucking follows me around with the camera. And this is a process in itself. And skate park rapists, which was just a series on YouTube about skateboarding uh, that I came, that I started putting out a little over a year ago but I'm gonna put the link to the first video and in this video you actually see third-person view of both me and Mark so I have a camera set up on a tripod and it shows me doing my fucking lines and it shows Mark also following me with the fisheye camera um, which is this guy here and he holds it in his hand I even smash into him by accident in that video. It's a good one. So again, Skate Park Rapists 1. Click on the link if you want to check that shit out. Uh, I recommend it though. It's very interesting, especially if you don't skateboard. I, I think it's fascinating and I do skateboard. So the thing is, uh, when I say it's not ex not really acceptable anymore to like just get something once because consistency is important. Not only is it more fun for the skateboarder, but it looks way better looks way better so I'm gonna put up a few clips of lines here and that's when you can do three or four tricks or more in a row Yeah, if it takes a thousand tries to do one hard trick and you want to do four different tricks put together and each of those tricks is like a thousand try long trick, well, it's going to be very hard and it's going to be extremely unlikely that you land all four of those tricks in succession unless you practice each one individually over and over and over again. And you think a thousand tries is long? Well, a million tries is fucking longer, you know? But sometimes that's what it takes if you want to be able to put four tricks together. And if you work on your consistency, you can do lines all the time. And the better you are, the more advanced the lines get. And they get longer and longer. And they get better and better. And the tricks become harder and harder. But all this becomes easier and easier to you. And a lot of skaters too, like nowadays, they don't think like that because they're just skating for fun. Even though they want to blow up. But like they're, they don't know... like. They think they're missing something, but they don't know what it is. And it's filming lines. And the thing about that is that you get so much better. You get so much better. And you get so much better filming yourself because you see everything that you do, good or bad. And even if you get something that you think is perfect, you can watch it after and find out that there's something that you don't like about it. And it's going to make you want to redo it. And how I start filming a line, I find a lot of people get discouraged because they realize how much they suck. Myself included at first when I started to film. When I got my first camera when I was 18. And I tried to do three tricks in a row like I saw in the videos and it was so hard. And I managed to do those three tricks in a row. It took me like an hour and all three of those tricks were really easy tricks. And they all looked like shit. And my argument was well it was hard to do them. And it's true. So like yeah you have to be really good and really comfortable on a skateboard. to Or, or on anything and anything you do. To be able not to do just one impressive thing, but five impressive things or ten impressive things in a row and make those impressive things look effortless. So yeah, you start off with basic tricks. You know, five really easy tricks in a row, big deal. It's fucking easy. To the beginner, it might not be easy, but to me, the easy tricks are easy. So I would start doing, you know, I'd plan my line, you know, easy, 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 and I'd land it and film it, and then like another easy 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 and then a bit harder trick and a bit easy 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 harder harder easy easy harder 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 and slightly changing the tricks every time and th this is really cool and this is the way to do it and it's basically you're just warming up and you're building yourself up and the thing is if if you try to do things that are too hard 
even if you land them, if they're beyond your skill level, like they're gonna look like shit. And in between the tricks, there's gonna be a lot of fucking struggling because the first trick that's gonna be landed is gonna be really fucking hard. And the skater's not gonna land it properly. And he's gonna keep going because it's good enough because it's fucking hard to do. You know, and his arms are gonna be all fucked up and then he's gonna try another really hard trick that he's maybe landed twice in his life. And he's gonna hope to God that he gets it and he might get it, he might not. And as opposed to if you can do all of those tricks every try anytime anywhere then it should be no big deal to string them together but it just takes practice to be consistent that's all and that discourages a lot of people and when they set out to film a line they realize just how inconsistent they actually are or when they set out to film a trick you know and they realize they can't get it first try it, it discourages them from filming now i know guys that are fucking incredible on a skateboard and it's really hard to film them because they land everything first try and I don't know where they're going to go. And they're fucking hard to follow. And then I have to sometimes even ask them to do it again. But if that's the case, it's no big deal for them. Because to them, what might be... What I might consider extremely hard to do. And what might take me 20 tries to film. They might get first or second try. Which is great. Because it means that there's more to come. So that's, that's how uh, I approach it. And anyway, I'm going to let you guys watch all my landed tricks. And then I'm going to give a final thought at the end. So, enjoy. Moving on.
Let's make a baby. Okay, one intro coming up. <laughs> All right, so I didn't just put landed tricks in. I put a couple of slams in for comedic effect. I have I found it uh, quite fitting, but Anyway, that's it. Those are all the landed tricks, and uh, I think it looks pretty fucking cool, actually. And I usually hate watching fucking ho-hum footage of myself. If I landed something cool, if I did something new, or whatever, if I didn't feel like shit that same day, then I'm psyched. But usually the missed attempts, like, I I don't watch them often. I, I don't. like Because mo most of the time, like, for most of my tricks, I've been doing them a really long time. I have them very consistently. If I miss them, I just miss them. You know, it's it's usually for a reason of which I am aware or something happens and I miss it. It's not like I try it like a million times and I can't get it. But for the tricks that I'm working on, then yeah, I'll watch the misses. And yeah, it hurts to fucking watch. It fucking sucks. But then you watch all ends after and it's a lot better. And the thing that I hadn't realized is and look man this isn't i'm not saying this because oh you know if you focus on the positive like everything all the bad goes away it's not entirely what i'm saying and if if this were my first video i've ever edited i might even say that but it's not uh, you can check on my channel i have probably around a hundred skate videos now and each one is a couple of minutes long and before i had uh youtube skate videos i would upload them to facebook then i realized nobody gave a shit so i uploaded them to youtube and uh on facebook i think i had 75 skate videos that were all like three to five minute lo minutes long you know three to five minutes of tricks not of talking or any shit like that not like now <laughs> so um yeah man i started making them and when when i watched the footage of this one especially the 360 flip footage this is where it gets very interesting because the first half that I did just like at the beginning of the session, you know, where I was landing them fairly easily and when I missed them, it wasn't painful. And well, those ones, they were shit for the most part. Like I won't disown them because I'm still learning and I'm happy to land any trick and, and they weren't they weren't like that bad. But they were by no means perfect. I got, I got a couple of like clean ones, but for the most part, they were lacking. And it's strange because at the time, you know, because it went... I'll get to that later. Try not to get sidetracked too much. But because I landed them quickly and I landed them quite easily, I and, you know, I was happy in the beginning of my session. I assumed that they were good. And I'll watch the footage after, and yeah, they're not bad. And 
the thing is though the ones at the end because i missed a lot a lot more at the onset and i ate shit on the ones that i missed i really fucking ate shit and it was the end of the session too and mentally i was getting fucking nervous because i had such a good session and i figured it could only go downhill from here and that's what it felt like it did and i landed about the same amount and i ended up doing twice as many i think i did like 40 or so but yeah i landed even more than the first time but the thing is um the ones i landed they were a lot better they were and you know i landed straight uh the first half of the ones i did my front foot i was a little bit like heel heavy on the board well i was on my toe but on my heel side of the board like i'm like leaning front side a few times anyway you can see if you if you check it out and it's really interesting because the second half like most of the ones i landed except for the ones where i freaked out but most of them i landed fucking square on the board and i rode away like straight 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 not a fucking inkling of uh disbalance which is is that a word no anyway it is now but it's very interesting and also like you think oh i'm getting tired at the end of the session for what it's worth uh I'm not going to say don't get tired because I do but that session I didn't get tired and for the most part like all the exercise I do and stuff and filming lines and I don't I don't take breaks at the skate park really you know I'll chill once like right after I get warmed up and maybe smoke a spliff with Mark or by myself but a lot of the time I just skip that and I just skate the whole way through and I know that I shorten my sessions this way I usually don't last more than two or three hours but i get fucking solid skating in you know i know that if i rested more periodically then i'd probably be able to stay there for like four or six hours but i don't always have four to six hours to stay there and i don't always want to stay there for four to six hours so but yeah i i, I probably will though i mean a few times in the summer it, it is fun too you know especially at the other skate park with the beach volleyball court it's right next to the lake i love that park but I love this one too. I love this fucking empty one too with the shade and shit. Uh, one of the things that's kind of depressing, or it used to depress me, but I kind of like now, is it's always empty. But back then it used to depress me because it was boring for me to skate by myself. Now it depresses me because it tells me that people just aren't skating. And they're not doing fuck all. Like... Pfft. But anyway, yeah, what am I going to do, right? I'm just going to keep on fucking skating and keep on making videos. That's that's what I'm going to do. And I, now I want to explain a bit about the magic behind fucking the video. And hopefully I can share it with other people and encourage them to start making videos too. And get better. And maybe go somewhere. Maybe get sponsored. You know, and that's one of... I think if I can, uh, if I can attribute one major factor... Um, responsible for why well, I never went anywhere in skateboarding uh, I would say that that's it I mean it's a lot of things you know I didn't practice enough but why you know why like and uh, that's pretty much the the simplest conclusion that I can come to it's that I didn't put the emphasis on video production that I do now in my younger years in my formative years so i got my first camera when i was 18 but i got very discouraged because it was hard to film and it made me realize how much i sucked and yeah you only have to film like the one landed trick you don't need to film the two million fucking attempts you know and you put all your landed tricks together and you come up with a video part but this takes a while and it's hard to do and then you got to find someone to film for you or you got to set the camera up yourself like it's it's daunting for a kid and i and that's the way you would do it, you know, you would film tricks, then you would have two minutes of footage, which is about 50 different tricks, and then you would send it to all the companies, and you would ask them to sponsor you, and most of them would reject you, and if you were good though, hopefully, like, you got a few sponsors, and then you would have to submit footage every month to them, and uh, usually, uh, like, 15 seconds, or 30 seconds of footage, which is quite long actually but i'll get into that in another video and in return every month they would send you a box of their shit so if you have a board sponsor you know you send them footage every month and every month they send you a box of skateboards and you can use them or you can sell them you can do whatever the fuck you want the same thing with a shoe sponsor you send them footage every month and you get fucking box of shoes now different companies are more flexible that was a golden rule but that's before social media and youtube and everything like that 
Again, now companies are a lot more fucking lax in their video production. But the better ones, I find anyway, like they're not too, too, too demanding of their skaters because that's just treating them disposably. Like one company was asking for its AMs to submit one minute of footage a month. That just doesn't make sense. That's fucking, uh, that's 12 minutes of footage a year. That's six video parts worth a year for just one company. So skaters have to put video parts for whatever companies they ride for. Like my shoe sponsor, for example, is going to be putting out a video in two years and everybody that's sponsored by that shoe company is working on a video part. But my board sponsor is putting out a video in a year and a half and everyone that rides for that company is working on their video part too. So the more sponsors you have, uh, the more work you have to do. So it's not just all about being a shill. And if you are a shill and you're not doing the work, because a lot of sponsors, not all sponsors require footage. If you have like a watch sponsor or something like that, or like a lighter sponsor or a fucking medicinal marijuana sponsor, like they're not going to ask you to send them footage as much as a skate company would, if ever. You know, but again, you know, you got to pick your sponsors fucking wisely. And because uh, people are ever so critical. And sometimes like they, they should be. You know, there's this one YouTuber and he's like, anyway, fucking sucks at skating and he has a shitload of videos. He has like 200 day in the life videos and they're all over half an hour long. And he's got a bunch of other shit, but he's a fucking shill and he rides for like a fucking, he accepts any sponsorship thrown his way. And he rides for like a Chinese skateboard company that has no idea uh, about anything regarding skateboarding. And it's like a typical like mass produced like knockoff like um opportunistic fucking venture i guess and you know they make helmets and elbow pads and like wrist guards and shit and the guy's a fucking grown-ass man he's like as old as i am and he wears a helmet and elbow pads and like he puts the stickers everywhere from the chinese company and he shills for whatever fucking company wants to send him stuff and he doesn't have that many subscribers and that's why and again he kind of sucks at skating it's bums me out because he can do a couple of tricks that i can't do but this guy he really sucks i'm not going to mention his name because I, I don't want to go down that road but like whatever fuck I guess if you want in the comments i'll tell you if you're right <laughs> so and uh yeah what was i gonna say um yeah i just about sponsors and shit uh requiring footage so people don't think of it that way anymore and again look the first half of the three flips i did they weren't great even though i thought they were in the second half even though i was frustrated they were a lot better and there's a way to do this trick um well, there's a couple of ways, but there's a way that's like really nice and you have to spread your legs. And this is something that comes with time. Some people have it naturally, but I'm not one of those people. You know, in the, for the first like year and a half or two years I did it, my legs would like fucking crisscross in the air. Again, I said it before, I look like a fucking fag. And I, I haven't been consciously trying to spread them because if I try that, it, it always fucks something up. But like a professional, let's say, or somebody that's really good, you could slow-mo their trick and every point in time you know like no matter where you would pause the frame like what they're doing is beautiful it, again it's like a fucking ninja all right it's like a ninja doing like a spinning fucking back kick or something like that like every part of the fucking maneuver is pleasing to the eye every part looks fucking amazing if like a fucking toddler or a retard tries to do the same thing he's gonna look all retarded and shit and like that's how i am like really and it was that you you could slow-mo like my fucking nicest version of the trick i'm not going to do it but like you could and you could slow-mo my best one and at not one point in time at all at all at all are my feet or any of my body doing anything that could be remotely considered stylish whatsoever so it's like a fucking abomination and the only reason i could get away with like fucking Using the footage of me landing this trick was if I played it in real time. You know, and I peppered it with a bunch of other tricks. But at first, I did it so bad that I couldn't even... And so inconsistently that my hopes of fucking landing one on film were like fucking few and far between. But, you know, more and more. I just landed a whole bunch. I didn't even have a great day. And the second half that I fucking got, they were better than the first half. And I didn't think that. I thought they were fucking worse, but they were better. And I'm noticing now that a lot of the second half... The ones in the second half too, they're fucking proper. 
and when I slow mo in, like, because you kind of have to when you're editing it, like, you get to control the frames manually. And anyway, you end up seeing it whether you like it or not. So, you know, there are points in midair when I'm doing stylish shit and I'm almost fucking ninjaing. Almost. Almost. So, there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. There is hope. And, uh, that's, I don't know, man, like, uh, I'm not a liberal. Fuck Obama. <sighs> but there is hope if you practice hard. And if you review your mistakes. And if you go back and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. And the reason why I don't release like this footage like as an edit in itself is because it's too many tricks. There's too many and they're not they're not good. It's like repetitive and shit like that. Yeah, they're good, but again, they're not groundbreaking. It's just warm up tricks and it's a cool video. But I'm all the next video I make is going to be like the shortened edit and if i were to make a skate edit out of the footage it will be the type of edit that i'm going to make and since it's not again like hardcore like crazy shit like i might put like a couple of the falls in there for effect and uh yeah i'll show you guys how it turns out so please let me know what you guys think i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope it was fucking insightful at least and it shed some light because I could talk about this shit for hours and I try to keep it methodical so I apologize for going off on tangents but I had this conversation so many times with people at the skate park and shit like that and uh, you know because people have asked me often where I get the motivation to film and stuff like that because we're always filming and I offer to film for other people I offer to help them get sponsored and shit like that but for the most part they're fucking lazy so hopefully like this is gonna fucking wake some people up and um give give some people to get up and go to go do what they need to do and more importantly than that when fucking skaters need a filmer they're gonna hit me up and i'm gonna get famous and i'm gonna be able to shill all my fucking products so please leave a thought in the comments downstairs it's fucking raining now but it's a reward after a fucking tough week so now i get to fucking relax so i hope you guys all have a fucking great weekend i'm fuzzy dunlop skates Please like, share, subscribe. It really helps. You guys are watching Bridge Burners TV, Chatelet Bros.